what's going on guys so i figured today i'm going to turn the camera on do a little valve clearance on this benelli tnt and um i've just been waiting for a valve clearance tool but it's arrived this morning so uh, we'll get that we'll have a look at that today so i'm going to drag it out and i'll see you in a minute I thought I'd just quickly show you some of the tools that I've been using for this job. So, I've got these valve clearance tools. These are the most important, in my opinion, just so uh, you can use like long nose pliers and that. And I have done in the past, and you can get away with it. But if it's your first time and you want it to go all smoothly, get yourself some valve clearance tools. They're uh, really good. For this one, for the Benelli TNT 125 2019, you want a 9mm one. And that is 10, that'd be this one. 9mm valve adjuster tool. I'll leave, I will leave a link. If I forget, just comment and I'll, I'll get the link for you. Um, what else do you need? So make sure you've got, where's it gone? One of these little junior mini screwdriver things. Because some of these screws on the uh, panels are really hard to get to. So get yourself one of these. These are cheap. Pan down as the. Um, obviously you're going to need to sell some feeler gauges. Um, socket set. Ideal socket set. You want one of them. And, and most importantly, you need some Allen keys as well. That's uh, what one's that? So you want a four four mil Allen key is for all the bolts to get it off. With my bolts, they was all rounded off. So I'm thinking about getting some new ones. But um, if you're watching this, then the valve clearance went very good. So uh, well, yeah, it did go very good. Better than I thought it'd be anyway. And you want a manual. Now this one here, this is this this ain't the service manual. This is the owner's manual. I bought the wrong one, but I went on the TNT 125 group. Well, no, it's just Benelli TNT group on Facebook. And you go in the files section, and they've got all of that. Shout out to the Benelli TNT 125 group. There's over 10,000 members on there. They're all very helpful. And one of the actual admin got in contact with me and gave me a lot of information. So thank you very much for that. So make sure you go and have a look at that group as well. And, um, yeah, that's about it, really. I hope you enjoyed the content. I will show you a little video of what my bike sounds like now. Um, it used to cut out and that for the valve clearance and... I went on loads of different sites and people were telling me it was a bad earth or it was like air leak or something and I knew that it was an actual, I knew for a fact it was the valves. So I've done a valve clearance, it's now running absolutely beautifully, it's not cutting out. So make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you or if you want and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks bye. Okay so I'm going to start this video off just by saying, like as a little disclaimer, I'm not by, by any means a professional mechanic. I'm just someone who like is interested in bikes and does it as a hobby. Like I fix up bikes and sell them, like not as a living, just as a hobby. Really, I'm a hobbyist. And uh, another thing, if you ain't got the right tools for this job, don't bother doing it, because you could do damage to your bike and it's not going to be cheap. You can ruin your bike just by um, like not wanting to pay the money to the mechanic. I got a quote to get this valve clearance done, and it was 120 pound. And um, that's me taking it to him, and I was fully on going to pay him. But then when he said £120, I thought, nah, that is way overpriced. That's like, well, I don't even want to talk about it, but that is like, what, two hours work, £60 an hour, two hours work. I believe I can do this in less than two hours. And that's myself doing it for the first time. So just make sure you've got the right tools. I've ordered a, a valve clearance tool, a proper one off eBay. It cost me £12.99, and I will show you that throughout this video, and I will try and leave a link for that on eBay. And um, I've never used one of the tools before, but every time I've done a valve clearance, I've always like just, well, I've just done it without the tool, and you have to fiddle about with it a bit. And uh, sometimes you don't get it the first time, but with this one, where it's like a new bike, I don't want to actually chance it. So I've bought the right tools. Make sure you've got a torque wrench, they're cheap on eBay as well £10 for a little one, like £15 for a big one. So make sure you've got a torque wrench, make sure you've got your valve clearance tool. Just because you don't you want to be ripping your bike apart if you've never done it before and then like doing it wrong turning the engine on and then the bloody thing seizes up or blows up or whatever because then uh well, yeah you've ruined your bike so um i'm going to do this myself and i just thought i'm going to record it just so well like, if it goes well i can just i can give you some tips or something this is my first time doing this bike as i said i have done a few other valve clearances on other bikes but um not on a bike like this I've, I've done it on bigger bikes and stuff like that but this is a little 125 and I've, I've done a lot of research for I've done it so make sure you do your research make sure you take loads of pictures when you're doing it so um, that being said the first thing you want to do when you do the valve clearance is make sure your bike is cold 
So don't go, go driving about and then come do it. First thing when you wake up, or even if like you get a weekend off work or something, make sure it's been sat overnight, make sure it's nice and cold. This bike's been sat for two, three days, I haven't used it, so I know it's nice and cold. So uh, it's nice and cold now. I'm gonna pull it on a little um, paddock stand, if I can get one to fit it. I would have had it on my bench, but I actually can't be asked to take that little Vespa off, so uh, it's been a bit of a long week really. So yeah, I'm gonna put on a paddock stand, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by taking off these Allen bolts by the looks of it. And they look to be, what size are they? Let's see if we can guess it and get it right. I wanna say a four, a four mil. Oh, my flip flops fell off. <laughs> yeah, four mil. So you wanna get your four mil Allen head, not Allen head, you wanna get your four mil Allen key and take off, let's see how many there is. One, two, three, four, There's a screw there, I don't actually know if you have to take it off. Five. Well, after I do it, or I'll let you know how many is there anyway, innit? I'm just guessing at the minute. So yeah, I'm gonna start by doing this, and then uh, we'll go from there. So let me get on the paddock stand, and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so on this bike, there's a total of five bolts and about six screws. But as you can see, the bike's definitely been tampered with before because some of the bolts are not actually the correct bolts. I did actually have a little bit of trouble getting some of them off where they was rounded by the previous owner. So um, just bear that in mind. So it's not that. There's loads of screws that you think you have to undo, but you don't actually have to undo them. And... Um, what you do, obviously make sure you take your fuel cap off, oh, focus mate, make sure you take your fuel cap off and then when you take the plastics off put the fuel cap back on because the next thing for, oh, can't get my words out then, <laughs> the next thing for us to do now is get one, two, three, four allen heads off and they look like they are a little bit rounded as well unfortunately, so um, hopefully doesn't cause us too many problems but um, the YouTube video that I watched the guy didn't actually take the tank fully off he took it off I think he lent it backwards so I'm gonna put a couple of rags over it and do the same as he did so uh, I'll put you up on the camera and I'll see you in a sec
Okay, so the tank's up. I've just lent it on the back. Just be careful. I've unplugged this wire, which is probably to the um, fuel sensor to tell you how much fuel you've got in, because I'm pretty sure that's the pump there. So um, the next thing I'm going to do now is I've quickly cracked the spark plug. I'm just going to loosen the spark plug off, take that out, just so when I took, because what I've got to do, what I've read is I've got to click it up to fifth gear and then get ready to align the marks, which I'm going to do in a second. I'm just going to take this spark plug out. While that's out, we can have a little look at it as well, can't we? If he wants to focus. It's hard to do with one hand. <laughs> so yeah, I don't look too bad. Um, so now that's that, the spark plug, what I will do now is I'll click up to fifth gear. But first of all, before I start that, I'm going to go and have a quick coffee and just chill out for a minute because uh, it's getting quite hot and I can feel myself getting a little bit hot and bothered. And, uh, you don't really want to be doing this type of job when you're on bothered. You want to be nice and calm and relaxed. So uh, I'm going to do that, and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so on the left side of the engine, you've got your spark plug. I've taken that out in order to be able to move the wheel around. It's in fifth gear, and by doing that, I've just moved the wheel, kept clicking it until it's hit fifth. Now, I've seen this on YouTube. I don't know if it's actually going to work, but what they do is they use like a penny or something or a quarter or something. I've got this little 20 pence. I don't know if it's going to work. Fits in there, all right. So what you do? Get that with your long nose pliers. Let it in there nicely, <laughs> and it worked a treat. And you heard that click yourselves. That wasn't something that uh, that's worked a treat. That has. So um, let's get that out. And then what you want to do? I'm just getting everything ready. I'm going to take this out. Put this somewhere very safe. You don't want to lose this. I'm going to take the rocker cover, uh, the valve cover off. Sorry, I'm going to take that off. And by doing that, let me see what that is there. What are they there? So you've got four eight mil bolts you want to get off. Give them a little bit of spray with WD forty. Right, so I've got my extended bar here, and I'm just going to slowly crack them off. I'll try and get you a bit higher just so you can see what I'm actually doing. Go. Right, so that's one loose. And you want to do it in like a zigzag pattern, that's what I normally try to do. So I'll do this one, that one, that one, and that one. Three. Now, just taking note, they wasn't on there that tight, so uh, I will use the torque setting, but they was not on there tight at all. Just a little crack they wanted. Now this one seems to be a little bit awkward, but we might just be able to be able to nip it. Yeah, that's it. Right, so they're all cracked now, no issues at all, which is good. Um, so here is, I'm going to take this off. This just goes to the airbox, I think. So I'll take that off, get that out of the way. Yep, so I'm going to take these off. 
Get yourself a little parts tray or something like that. Just put them somewhere you ain't going to lose them. There's one. Threatens me magnetic tray so I don't drop it. There's two. And final two. Let me just get them out for the other one. Oh, it's very hot today, I'll tell you that. There's three. And the last one. Make sure we've got a good shot. Right, so this rocker cover should come off now. Valve cover, whatever you want to call it. Right, so I've got one more screw in here I've got to get out. I'll take that out. I'll leave that in, actually. Right. I'm going to take this over to the workbench and just get it out of the way. Right, and there we go. So there's your um, the inlet valves, and then you've got your exhaust valves over this side. And um, this is your cam chain over here. That sure all good. Um, I'm just going to uh, align the timing marks now, and I'll show you how to do that. So if I take you off the tripod. Right, so in this little inspection hole, try and get that out of the way. It's not there yet because I haven't aligned it your timing mark is in here and you want to move your back wheel until you get that timing mark and then I'll show you something else I'm going to quickly do that and I'll show you something else so you've got this line here and you want to line this line up with your timing mark so I'm going to quickly show you that right just to be a little bit more specific on aligning the timing mark yeah right so obviously at this time you've got your paddock stand or you've got a jack underneath it you're jacked up you've got your inspection hole here okay I've lined mine up already, but I'm going to do it again just to show you, just so you get it right. So here's the back wheel. You want to spin it manually with your hand like this, yeah? And what you want to do is you just want to literally, 
It's in fifth gear now. You want to only go this way. Don't go the backwards way because that might jump a two for something. It's quite hard to do it one hand. Let me come around this side because I found it a bit easier just to do it this way. So, if you look on your sprocket, there's a little line here. If that focuses. You want that line aligned with that line on there. If you can see that, just where my fingertip is, right there. So what we'll do, we'll spin it round. Hopefully I can do it one hand. And we'll see it move. And there you go, that line's up there, and it's lined up straight with that other line. And then what you want to do, just quickly focus it, you want to check your valves. Now they're a little bit loose, that's what you want. If they're all rock hard, then you want to do another another cycle. Another way to check that you're at top dead center, <laughs> well, I, this is how I do it, so a lot of mechanics might think differently, but what you can do, put a screwdriver down there and you can feel the piston it's right there that's the piston there so that's that top dead center if your screwdriver is going all the way in then you've got to do another cycle by another cycle I mean move the wheel again till that line comes up and in here the lining mark is actually in there if I had a torch I'd show you better but I haven't got a torch but you can see the mark in there as well so um, so that's that I hope that helped you a little bit and uh, now we're going to get onto the valve clearances. So let me find my uh, gauges and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so after doing a little bit of research just off camera, I've decided to go for the 0.06 millimeter spec. And I thought I'll just quickly show you. Before I do, obviously the first couple valves I'm going to do, I'm going to do off camera just to try and suss it out because um, it is my first time doing it on this bike. But if you look at these valves here, they've got a bit of clearance. Yeah, that's a good thing. I've actually done a little valve clearance on these two, and these two are um, a bit too much clearance, so they'll need a bit reducing. On the exhaust valves, so these two here, these are your inlet valves. We've got inlet valve here and here, and then obviously here's your exhaust, which means these are your exhaust valves. Now with these ones, oh, they ain't moving at all. So they're very, very tight, these two, which is common. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna start off on the inlet valves. I'm gonna quickly do them, because they're, they're literally quite easy, them ones. I've just got to quickly uh, reduce them and then I'm going to get a little bit of footage trying to do one valve or something just to show you how I get on with it all right so uh, I'm going to crack on with these two and I'll come back for the exhaust valves I'll see you in a minute okay so I've done all my valve clearances but what I'm going to do I got a bit carried away when I was doing it and I've done them all and I did actually record doing one then I realized I didn't press play so I'm going to quickly crack one again just show you how it does I just want to show you this little tool that I normally use so this here is a valve clearance tool. This is a nine millimeter one. I've got a pack and it come with, it came with 10 millimeter, eight millimeter and nine millimeter. That pack cost me 12 pound 99. I bought this pack specifically for this job to make it easier. So this here is the socket. It's like basically the socket spanner, whatever you want to call it. You put that on here. Hold up, let me just that's it, get that out of the way. So you put that on here. Right, lefty loosey righty tighty so to loosen your valve up like to, you've got to crack the nut first in order to actually adjust the valve so I'm going to do that quickly I'm just going to that's it so that's cracked now and then you can probably do the rest by finger that's it right so now I can adjust this valve in order to adjust the valve you either use a set of pliers but I don't like using them because you always have to faff about them or you can use this little tool which is um, the actual tool for the actual job so if I put that on there Righty-tighty, so if I want to tighten the valve, i push it all the way right. Oh, no, it's, 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 there we go. And what that does there, that tightens the valve. Obviously, we don't want to do that. We want to loosen the valve to get clearance. So what we do, we loosen it right up, get the feeler gauges. So I'm just using 0.06 millimetre. That's just what I want to use. I want to see how that works out for me. And we're going to screw that up a little bit until we've got a nice little grip on this. So this is going in and out, but it's not going in and out too easily. You can feel it. Right, I'm leaving that in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to screw this nut so it ain't got so much play on it. And then I'm going to leave this feeler gauge in there. I'm going to get my special tool. Where have I put it? That's the eight. 
and that there is the nine. So here is my special tool. I'm going to put that in here. Right. So to tighten it up, you want to go righty tighty. But first of all, I want to put this attachment that goes into the tool that actually holds onto the valve to stop it from actually moving. So you hold onto that. Be nice if one of you could help me. And then you want to just don't let it move. That's it. Tighten it up and double check your clearance. That's a nice clearance there. That is nice. It's not too loose, but it's not too tight. Now. Um, that's me done so all I've got to do now is just go around triple check the clearances to so just go around check them don't check them twice check them three times because you don't want to be taking the cover back off and doing this all again so I'm happy with that it's a little bit loose but it's still catching so I'm I'm actually really happy with that the other one I've checked twice I'm gonna quickly check that again and then um, we'll start putting this bike back together and fire it up and see what it's like. So before this valve clearance was done, I was starting it up and it was just cutting out. When you warm it up for a good 10 minutes, it would run, but it would just keep making these weird noises. Hopefully, we see an improvement. So let me just quickly go around, double check everything, and I'll come back. See you in a sec. So she's running absolutely lovely. She's not cutting out no more. I used to stop at the lights and it would cut out, and now it doesn't cut out at all. 